Jesus Christ as we gather together on a rather late, rainy day. However, it is our day. Amen? Amen? It is our day to come into the sunshine of God's love. It is our day to gather together in order that we may hear once again the word that God would give us. I get a message on my phone that uh, reminds me that I need to stay well. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I got my second COVID shot last week, and um, ever since then, every day, uh, I get a little text that says, we're checking up on you, right? <laughs> Do you have a fever today? Yes or no? Do you have any pain today? Yes or no? You feeling good, fair, or poor today? Check that off. And I do that, and then I send that in, and they say, thank you, you're doing well, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. I was thinking that it would be really great if we had an arrangement like that with God, right? Yeah. <laughs> and every day, God would send us a text, and we're saying, how you doing today? Did you pray today? Did you fast today? Did you do an act of love today? Are you following Jesus today? How are you doing? Today, and we'd have to say yes or no, good, bad, or fair, right? And then God would say, bless you. I'm there to help you. I'm there to strengthen you. A question this morning about following Jesus. You'll hear it in the scripture. You've heard it before. And my question that I'm going to ask, and I think we all need to ask ourselves is, do we need to carry a cross? To follow Jesus. Can you follow Jesus without carrying a cross? And if the answer to that is yes, you do have to carry the cross to follow Jesus, then my question is what cross should I carry? What cross should you carry? What would it mean? How do we do that so we can follow Jesus? Word of God today can send us to Christ in order that we may find our way to salvation and eternal life. Incidentally, it's all too easy to carry that cross, isn't it? I mean, it looks like wood, but it's cardboard. Right? It's easy. I'm not sure the cross that Jesus wants us to carry is that easy. Now meet uh, Michelle. She is our liturgist for the morning. She'll share with us the announcements of the day. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you today. Uh, there are a few announcements. Um, one of, the first one I want to bring to your attention is when weather permits, um, Pastor will lead us after the service, probably Palm Sunday and Easter, we'll go outside over here to where the cross is and maybe join in with a few songs and a few words of praise so we can have a little outdoor and we can actually sing out loud. Um, that would be a big blessing for everyone. Our Lenten offering, uh, we're asked if we could put a dollar each week for the seven weeks of Lent. And there's a box out there um, as you leave the church near the offering plate. Um, the funds collected by Easter Sunday will supply 150 sandwiches for the homeless and more. Let us enjoy the grace of giving. On Tuesday, March the 9th, we're, uh, we're hosting the Lifeline screening people here at the church. You need to make an appointment if you'd like to participate in the Lifeline screening. And the phone number is there on the screen. And we'll also post it on our Facebook and website for everyone to see. It comes out in the newsletter also, the, the uh, information about uh, scheduling your lifeline screening appointment if that's what you desire. And now I'd just like to give special greeting to all of you who are joining our recorded worship service. It is a joy to share this experience with you wherever you may be tuning in. We'd love to hear from you. 
the comments, questions on the sermon, prayer requests, you can email the pastor, the Trinity Clintonsville pastor at gmail.com, or you can call the church office with any um, of that information you need. And now I'd just like to share the peace of Christ with you. So peace of Christ be with you. And now share that peace with your neighbors and friends.
you could stand while we share the call to worship. We gather in worship to give praise to God. We lift our hearts to honor the Lord our praise. We know God hears us. We are struck with wonder before Him.
shine upon them, so that we may be able to get more and more of our lives out of the dark and into the light of God's love. And now let us share a moment of silent prayer, of confession, of our thoughts, words, and deeds. Through our land. 
I mean, I'm not sending you a text saying, how's your prayer and fast and love going this week? But we'll give you a chance to do that together. I know it's not kind of springing that, but we'll do it each week. But <coughs> today, I today want to share a word on how you're praying, fasting, and loving as well. Okay, so for me, if I see people dead as they come driving by and I see that they're homeless, now I don't always have time or the chance or the money to pass them anything, but I always think of them. Mm -hmm. And I come home to myself and I say, please God be with the people I saw today that are homeless. And if I give me a chance, God, to make, you know, give me a, help me and God make for a chance. To help them later on. Amen. Amen. So it's kind of both prayed and give it, it love. It is. It is. And I do, you know, I do think of in a general sense. I think of the people, especially when there's snow and ice and yeah. any yeah. kind of bad weather. I always pray extra hard for, for that day. Yeah. Good. Combining an act of love with an act of prayer. I'm thankful for being the recipient of the love shared by Nancy uh, Kerrigan and, and Susan Shiflett in their opening up their homes to take care of Mary Cosme's cats. Oh, and the cats. Yes. Yeah. And the love that they have shown those cats given has been wonderful. It is. And we had a chance to see Nancy at Bible study the other night yes. to share some of that. Mary Quasney, of course, now at Encore. Can't take your cats to Encore, but they're very important, aren't they? They're very important. Who's going to care for them? And they're an act of love that uh, someone extended that care. Susan, and by the way, keep Susan in prayer, because, no, <laughs> it's an interesting thing for having a cat, because you already got two. You know, you have to figure out how to integrate cats, and that's, that's an interesting thing. Uh, but she's also, Susan is also continuing to go through the recovery from uh, the surgery she had a week ago Friday. Thank you. Thank you. It is an interesting thing. Uh, just a brief word. I just shared the other night about, about fasting. And how my discovery is that the first couple days of that is, is, is kind of is kind of easy. You know, it's like a dare. It's like... Okay, I did that a couple of days, but then I found like it's like uh, climbing a hill on your bicycle. The first couple of pedals, oh, I got this thing made, but then you realize you got to do 20, 30, 40, 50 of them pedals to get up the hill. The ongoingness of the fasting, I think, is the challenge in sticking with it and saying, well, maybe this, thing. yes, you do, yes, you do. Amen. I wish you well in continuing to have it. A holy land. Let us now enter into some kind of a prayer together. Um, and we can all mark this day as a prayer day for us in our, in our calendars. We want to be attentive to the prayer requests that, uh, that, that we all have, that the prayer of one can be the prayer of many that are a part of God from our hearts. So uh, let's begin. Uh, God, if you might share those prayer requests that have come to us, both joys and concerns. I personally want to thank the Lord for all the blessings and um, that he has given me and the guidance in my life mm -hmm. so that I can continue just as the angel on our, our uh, altar showing that beacon of light, trying to, to bring that beacon of Christ to our community and our world. Um, we are glad that Peggy, our church secretary, had a wonderful time in um, uh, Florida visiting her family and friends. And we offer uh, safe travel prayers for her and Tony, her son, as they travel back to Maryland from Florida. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Gladys shared this morning that Thelma is happy at um, Heartlands because Visitation has now started back again, so we are thankful for that, uh, the visitation there. Unfortunately, at Encore, they have not announced when that 
We'll start again. Um, I've spoken, of course, to Henrietta and Mary. And, um, and the very first day that that opens up, I, I certainly will go and visit them, not only on my own behalf, but that of the church. Uh, Helen Connor continues to have many strokes, but it's as Gladys said. By the next day, she's back to her normal and thankful that, that she uh, is able to recover so quickly. Gladys, do you know, has she come out of quarantine? Um, yes. Oh, good. Good, good, good. All is well. Out of quarantine. You mentioned uh, Susan. We're, we're hoping that she continues to be well. She told Gladys this morning she just didn't think she would venture out today. And, and that's another thing, um, you know, the rain in winter, and especially after 20, uh, the year 2020, you know, uh, winter this year seems to have been a little harder than, than normal. So we want prayers for, for everyone for that. Um, each Sunday, I see the joy in your eyes or can feel the joy in your eyes as we come to the Lord's presence singing and we are grateful for Anne and her inspirational liturgy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were in higher places, Anne. <laughs> we are thankful and grateful for Anne for her inspirational presentations of the many loved hymns and uh, anthems. I know when uh, we're not allowed uh, or encouraged not to be singing during this time, but I see from the back, I see the heads nodding and um, the inspirational uh, presentations that you do of the hymns makes us sing even though we're not able to uh, do that verbally. Are there any other prayer concerns that people would like to share? I think we need to pray for the, the students and staff and teachers. Younger students are returning to Boma County, um, I believe this week or next. Um, and it's a journey because they haven't been in school since last March. And, um, so, and it's going to look different for everybody. Everybody's wearing masks, everything is socially distant. You know, it's two days a week. It's, uh, it's a concerning time. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, the well, younger students like Jeremiah won't go back until after Easter, but I think everybody concerned, you know. I saw the sign out uh, somewhere coming to the church this morning. Um, saying that bus drivers are needed. So I thought, uh oh, oh, we're getting back to school. We want it all to go well, but we want it all to go very safely well. So let us keep uh, that education adventure in our prayers. It'll be a challenge. But with the Lord's help, we will find that way to do it.
days of Egypt. So, to, it, and like you said, the Lord knows it's Mr. Stanford's yeah. voice. So, yeah. Just keep them in our prayers. They buy the good to it in two days of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Two days of Egypt. Yeah. Uh, Lord knows. The Lord cares. The Lord loves. The strength and comfort and encourage. Pastor, we also pray for our country and, and all of our leaders because we have major decisions that need to be made. And not only uh, the leaders in our country, but the leaders you know, in our local communities. Yeah, tough time. I've gone through these people. And now I have to figure out how to get everybody uh, access to vaccination, how to keep everybody safe. It's a hard time how to recover economically. May the Lord give wisdom to our viewers. Say, I want to say a prayer of thanks. Uh, his name is Charlie, I think. Their house burned down. And near you, Larry. But it looked to me like it's rebuilt. And I think they're back in there, are they not? It looks like. It. So I just want to give thanks to the Lord for that. Because I uh, drive by that house frequently, and I knew they were working on the other day. I went by and I bought us a license sign. So we rejoice in the Lord that. Charlie and family back in, back in their house. Amen. And then Jack? One more. Um, I think at our college, uh, well, not ours, but Essex, I think you can go on their website and they are offering vaccines. I think it's on a Friday. At so CCBC? At CCBC Essex. Okay. And it's on Fridays and you can go to their website. And I also heard that if you can't drive there or something, they would find a way. So you can go on that website because they are far from it. Thank you for that word. Check the website of uh, CCBC for access to, uh, to vaccination you know, for ways of uh, keeping ourselves safe and helping others as well. Amen? Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God who is with us always. Lord, who knows us better than we know ourselves and knows our friends before we know them. Knows their, their cares and their ills before we know them. But Lord, who responds to our hearts as we lift our hearts concerned for the folks that we have named before you, that you may bless them, you may nourish their lives, strengthen, and give comfort to them. We praise you, God, not just because you know so much, but that you care and you love so much, and that there is so much power in your caring and in your loving and in your mercy. And Lord, we would just devote ourselves to you. In total dependence on you, Lord, we lift those whom we have named before you. Some by name, some just because we know them and know you know them. We lift, uh, we lift Phyllis's male care, son to you, that you may care for him. We lift that couple that Sharon named that you may care for those around them what a terrific loss in such a short time. Experienced by them and others that your loving care may be there and there may be uh, your great spirit that comes to fill the loss that folks have suffered that you might be there with them. Sometimes, Lord, the loss is so grievous, it's just really hard to mention. But you know, you care, you're there. And we thank you for that. And we know that your goodness and mercy will carry those who are in distress. We look to you, God, for the resuming of education in this county and in others throughout our nation. Students that need to get to school to learn, but need to find at that school a safe environment for themselves, their teachers, their staff, and all those involved, bus drivers. And we pray that you may lead the way, provide the wisdom, secure the safe places, and let lives flourish, nourished by the coming together of folks who just want to learn, and those who want to teach, and those who want to care for them. We pray your goodness and your mercy in all these things. Receive our thanks, O oh Lord, for the many acts of love that we see about us, May they all, Lord, uh, magnify and come together in a harmony of love that will just ignite our land. Because with that, we can find our way. 
With that, we'll find a way of working together to get our way through any challenges that come upon us. Without that, we are lost. And so we pray that you would nourish every candle that's lit as an act of love. Light that candle richly in the lives of those who are our leaders. Because you've got to lead with love for us again anywhere. Wisdom and, 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 and great imagination are just a lot of love. We ask this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, who is the Lord of love, who just cries out to us every day, take up your cross and follow me. Lord, we come to follow him and ask your blessing upon us in Jesus' name. We would just take his words and use them as our prayers. We pray to you and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I am the kingdom and the power.
from Genesis chapter 17, 1 through 7, and 15 through 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but you shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring, after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she'll, she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Our gospel reading comes from Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. And we stand in honor of the gospel. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples, and he said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. What will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? For those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. And this is the word of the Lord. Now you may be seated. A couple of joys and concerns I want to add to our, our prayer time. Um, I want to give thanks to the work that uh, our treasurer, Lee Rockenball, and our lay leader, Bobby Bean, have done in the past uh, many weeks to submit our statistical report to the conference. Oh, yeah, 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 it's just a bunch of numbers, but they've got to be the right numbers, right, Bobby? Because it's a presentation of who we are uh, to the conference. And it got to be the right numbers uh, money-wise because it determines what our apportionment will be in the coming year. It is an arduous task, and not everybody wants to do it. I don't even know if they want to do it, but it is taken up by them, and they do it for us, and I think they deserve our hand of applause. <laughs> Plus, it used to be you just put the numbers together and mailed them in. Now you got to go through something called Nehemiah, Jacob, 
Ezra, yeah, one of those Old Testament guys, Ezra, is the program that you have to do it through. God, just appreciate it very, very much. Also, want to ask that we remember to keep Phyllis uh, Martin in our prayers. Phyllis, grievous loss in her family, her uncle, uh, beloved aunt died um, during the past week. And we continue to keep you in our prayers for God's strength and comfort to be with you. Amen? Amen. Taking up the cross and following Jesus. How are you with that? Um, see, it's really interesting because, you know, there's this, the, the, um, the scripture, and it's in all the Gospels, isn't it? But, but it's a little different in each one, but you heard the one this morning, and, and, and it's always kind of the same. It's a, it's a conversation between Jesus and his disciples, then Jesus and Peter, then Jesus and the crowd, and the fact that Jesus and his disciples. It begins before we began reading tonight, to this morning, when when um, Jesus asked his disciples, um, uh, who do they say that I am? And they have various issues. Because see, one of Jesus' main tasks in being the Messiah is to convince people not to look for another one. You know? Because he was a particular kind of, he was a Messiah of love. And not everybody wanted to see a Messiah of love, right? Somebody wanted to see a Messiah of head knockers, yeah? Um, and Jesus had to convince people that he was the one. And the only way to do that is to start with some and then build up to many. So he starts with his, who do they say that I am? And they had their words and then he looks at them and he says to them as he would say to us, who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter puts his hand up first. Y'all went to school somewhere <laughs> at some time, and you had somebody in your class who was always the first one to put their hand up. They didn't always have the right answer, but they always had the answer. Peter's that guy or that gal. The first with his hand, you are the Christ. You are the Christ of God. You are the one sent by God to be the Messiah. You are the one. We will look for no other. And then Jesus then takes that affirmation. And what he wants to do is to tell Peter, you hang on to that. Hang on to that as tightly as you can. Because it's going to get tough before it gets better. And he says, I will be handed over to men. And they will crucify me. But on the third day, meaning soon after, I am crucified, I will rise again. Peter never got to that part. But in his fear, and in his not yet complete understanding of what it would mean to be the Messiah of love in a world, how does Jesus describe the world? Uh, godless and forsaken. This adulterous, to be the Messiah of love in that world is a very dangerous thing. And all Peter heard was he would be handed over to the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And then Peter says, no, no, Lord, not you. Take it easy your way. You must know a shortcut. Maybe you could sneak around that part and kill right to the resurrection. And Jesus says to him the same thing he said to Satan on the Mount of Transfiguration. Get out of here. It's not right. That's not right. And right at that moment is when he turns to the crowd. I assume that means us. We're the crowd. And he says to them, as the Messiah, take up your cross and follow me. And then he goes on to say, unless we do that, we lose our life. In words that kind of, that suggest that we, without God, are totally lost. We don't know where we're going. We just wander this earth following one little semi-God after another. One little piece of glamour after another. Without God, we are totally lost. And Jesus says, you don't have to be that way. You can be found. You can be saved. You can find life everlasting. Take up your cross and follow me. So I think that we need to define, and maybe you already have, maybe you know, 
I mean, maybe you could write down right now, this is my cross. This is, and maybe you got a couple of crosses you carry. Maybe you got three or four crosses you carry. This is my cross. And I will, I will carry this. And that's it. And, and, and if you have, that is good. But let me just suggest some things, okay, that might be our cross. It might be my cross or your cross. One, I think sometimes the cross is, maybe all the times, is a situation in which we find ourselves. Yeah? Because that surely was Jesus' cross. Here's my cross, Jesus said. i got to live a life of love in a world that's just full of selfishness and hate. And it's going to cost me because it's not always going to look good to people and they're going to give me a hard time about that. And finally they're going to beat me and hang me on the cross. It can also be the situation of a whole people. I, I think that the 450 year history of the slavery of the Hebrew people in Egypt was their cross, you see. They had to carry that cross through all those years of slavery in Egypt, staying faithful to God, saying sure that God is the one that's going to save them in this, not varying from their way because the way got very tough, having to make bricks without straw, as the Bible puts it, until the time would come when their promised reward, when their long-anticipated reward would come and they could go out of Egypt into the wilderness where they could worship God as they should and then into a land, a new land, where they could live as they should before God. Carry your cross through that tough time. And I believe people through history who have been enslaved, the folks that were enslaved in our country, carried that cross and stayed faithful to their God. I mean, why else would they sing songs talking about God putting the, uh, putting the North Star up in the sky for them to see and lead them to freedom? Why else would they sing, swing low, sweet chariot, if they weren't staying faithful to their God in spite of the cruel situation they were in, Knowing that one day freedom was going to come and you heard it in the song. Until at last we tread on the land for which our father sighed. Yeah, but in the sighing is our carrying. I will carry this situation. I will bear in this situation because I know that God is going to see me through. I know that God is waiting for me to be faithful enough to get to my promised end. Sometimes I think Jesus wants to lay a particular cross on our shoulders. Sometimes I think Jesus knows just what we need to do in order to follow him more perfectly. The example of that, I think, is, oh, say, by the way, um, I'm trying to correct a particular little cross in my life. My wife has pointed out to me that when I want to make a particular point, like when I tell her why I'm not going to wash the dishes tonight, I tend to bend over like this. And she said, why do you do that? And I said, I don't know, I just do that. And she said, well, don't do that. You're short enough already. You bend over, people won't even see you. <laughs> so she didn't say that. I mean that. So, so if I do that, I apologize. I'm trying not to. Uh, but Jesus sees this rich young ruler, you know the story, that comes to him wanting um, eternal life. And what Jesus wants to tell him is, you have to follow me, but you have to take up your cross. And the cross, he says, for you, Mr. Rich Man, beyond anybody's imagination, is that you've got to sell all you got, give all you got to the poor, and then come and follow me. Take up that cross, and you can be my follower. And the rich young ruler couldn't do it. And he didn't follow. I think sometimes, oh, wouldn't it have been great if he had been able to do that? If he had said, well, I don't know if I can do that right now, but I'll start with 10%. I'll give away 10%. And next week, next month, I'll give away another 10%. Can you write a contract on your cross? I don't know. But Jesus, I think, would honor that. You're carrying that cross and you're carrying it more and more every day. And as you do that, you will find it easier because the reward is better than the loss. 
until at last the rich man, after he did 90%, goes to the bank and cancels out his last account, goes to his broker and sells his last stock and gives it to the poor. And when he does, Jesus meets him at the door, embraces him and says, now you can come and follow me. Now that you are no longer superior than everybody else and are now equal with everybody else in your need, now that you understand what it is to follow a Messiah of love, you can come and follow me and I will lead you to the kingdom. Now that was his cross. It doesn't apply to everybody. You'll notice that Zacchaeus had a cross, right? Zacchaeus' cross was what? He just had to give half of what he had away, right? He just had to return a portion of what he had swindled other people out of. And as he carried that cross just that quickly, he was following Jesus. And Jesus said, salvation comes at his house. But you got to carry it. Identify what that is for you that will make you like Jesus. And then we do that. And he embraces us and knows that we are with him. Not only with him in the spiritual sense. You know what I mean? That, that we know that Jesus' love is so strong and so pure and so wonderful that it's going to carry us through everything. Yea, we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, that's carrying the cross through the hard valleys. I know that is right and is that staying faithful to God in spite of all. There's a wonderful story in the Sun paper today, front page, about a uh, woman who is the pastor of a, 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 a Pentecostal church uh, in East Baltimore, Lucille Galloway, her name is, 95 years old, still a pastor of this church, still preaching every Sunday. They say she's not as strong as she used to be, probably had turned the amplifier a little bit more, but she's still there preaching every Sunday. Daughter of, granddaughter of a former slave her grandfather was. And there she is, preacher at that church, and she talks about the hard times through which she has come. And she doesn't say it, but it's written like a cross she's had to carry in order to be faithful to her call, and in spite of all, talk about a very, very sick time that she had. And she did what she was supposed to do to get over that sick time, but she said, my steadfast trust and faith in the Lord is what carried me through. Carrying my cross through this hard time. You see, it would be easy in the midst of hard times, even if it's something you've taken on yourself, to say, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna depend wholly on God. I'm gonna go and, and get, and I'm gonna go and trust somebody else. I'm gonna go and trust, or I'm gonna become cynical and bitter about this. Why does God take this burden away? You know those kinds of things. I'm gonna look to another God to follow me, to carry me. I'm gonna look for the wisdom coming from another place. But wisdom and power only comes from God, and it sees. Us through. Carry your cross, he says. In some ways, this COVID uh, pandemic is a cross we all carry. Is it not? It is, see? And, and, and we need our steadfast trust and faith in the Lord to carry us through. Jesus said uh, he would be uh, carrying his cross to Golgotha, and he'd be crucified there and be placed in the tomb. But soon after that, three days, I'll be raised again. And he was. It's a sign to us that we carry that cross, we will be raised. We carry the cross of the COVID. We do what we need to do in faith and trust in the Lord, who is the chief of all healers, will carry us through. He'll send us the means. And we'll give thanks to our God for leading us through all of this, because after three days or 30 days or 300 days or 3,000 days, we will finally be through it. And we'll be rid of it. And we will gather together in a great assembly of people. And we will give thanks to God for leading us through. Amen. It will be just as wonderful as the people walking through the Red Sea and finding new life on the other side. But it only means something to us if we find it as a God thing. And we're not going to thank Johnson & Johnson. We're not going to thank Pfizer, although they were a means that God used. But we're going to thank God. We're not going to thank some particular leader or not leader. Forget this, we're going to thank God. It will be a great day. And we'll all come together and we'll say hallelujah to God for leading us through this cross that we carry called the COVID. Because on the other side of that is what? It's resurrection. 
It's new life, and it's God waiting to embrace us if we stay faithful to him. Think about carrying a cross. Is if you want to think about it that way, it's very identifiable. You can't sneak up on somebody and pretend you're somebody else when you're carrying a cross, right? Who's that going down the street? That's Jesus carrying his cross. Who's that going down that road? Who's that walking that path? Who's that going that direction? Who's that? That's a Christian carrying his cross. I want to thank you for your support of the uh, food distribution drive that John Wesley Church did yesterday. I was there with him. It was a little messy. It got kind of rainy in the morning, but we were there nevertheless handing out boxes of food, wonderful boxes of food, full of lots of good stuff. Uh, <laughs> It was kind of funny though, they gave two bags of uh, barbecue sauce. Bar uh, barbecue rib sauce, it said on the package. But you know what? They ain't giving any ribs. Yeah, I guess you could put it on toast and be something. I don't know. But there was a lot of other good food in there. We were giving we were giving it out. We decided that we gave out as much as we could in the back of the church, and then we went to the front of the church, which faces right on North Avenue and took a, a whole a pickup truck load of boxes out there so that people could see them, people could have them. And my job was simply to hold up a sign that said free food. And then we had a couple of really big guys who could pick up the boxes that were quite heavy and put them in people's cars. And I'll tell you what, it was a wonderful thing to watch people drive by. They just stop, throw open the door, take in the food, and then drive on. Boom, one after another, 30, 40, 50 boxes, gone in uh, half an hour, and the, 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 the kingdom looked like it was real to me. And then I met a man who came by, and his job, he says, I go from place to place helping people. And I said, well, where's your base? He said, well, it's over on my grave, but really, you help people everywhere. I said, what are you doing? I'm taking homeless people that are living on the street, and I'm putting them in apartments and paying three or four months rent for them to keep them there. And every night I go out and find some more folks. And I put them in some more apartments. And he's working out of the back of a big U-Haul uh, truck. And I saw in the back a pile of mattresses and some chairs that he uses for furniture in those places. Now the kingdom of God is here. Why are you doing this? I said. He's, he said, I'm doing it for my mom. <laughs> he said, my mom was such a great person. She always wanted to help people. She was a faithful soul. She was a wonderful soul. And I'm doing it. I thought to myself, amen, but you're doing it for the kingdom. We're going to walk through this valley. And the way we're going to get through it is that everybody is carrying a cross. And that cross says, I'm following the Messiah of love. And the Messiah of love specializes in doing acts of love. I'm going to carry this cross in the faithfulness that the acts of love is what's going to lead us all to everlasting life. What's going to lead us all to the other side of this COVID It's going to lead us all to the other side of the strife in our society. And it's going to lead us all to that land of the reign of God that's called the kingdom of God that's full of the eternal life of God. And we're going to walk right into it and find Jesus embracing us there. May God bless us and help us to carry the cross, deny ourselves, fail to see ourselves, only the cross that leads us to Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your grace and your goodness is all we need. Your grace and your mercy will always prevail. Show us. Show us our cross and let us walk with it on our shoulder, on our heart, in our lives. May we be steadfast in our faith and trust of you to lead us through whatever may burden our lives because we know your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Because we know that you'll prepare a table before us. Because we know that surely your goodness and your mercy shall endure and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, amen. as we affirm our faith by reciting the um, affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed.
carry, and I'll carry that for you. We also offer our gifts of money to the Lord to our church, that through our church the Lord's name may be made known to folks and be made uh, a bright light for others to see. You know, we have this special offering during Lent, amen? And our deal is uh, for all of us, and there's about 30 or so of us that gather uh, each week. Others who aren't able to be here physically can also contribute to this as well. Just send it in. A dollar a week by even 30 people it amounts to what? Do the math. $210 at the end of, of uh, seven weeks, correct? Come on, I had a calculator. I think I'm right. And through that, we can make more than 150 sandwiches for the next mission to the homeless. We can buy some water for it, too. It'll be good. Let not bring us. We give thanks to God. That God has blessed us so that we, in the ways that God may show us, can be a blessing to others. So let us give our thanks to the Lord. Read with me. Bless thou the gifts of our hands and for all. Bless thou the work of our hearts and the land. Ours is the faith, the will, the thought. The rest of God is in thy hand. We thank you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you that you bless us every day. And we return with our gifts, with our lives, to just say, use this, Lord, use this. Bless us more, that we can bless others more in your holy name. Amen. Amen.